When it comes to survival or anything to do with the outdoors, there aren't too many topics that get people as interested and sometimes as riled up the way knives can. Some folks have a lot of opinions about knives, and some folks like to argue about knives, but I think we all might agree that any knife will work better if the thing is sharp. I've been on hunting trips that have lasted three weeks and backpacking trips that have lasted two weeks, and for those reasons, I've never used any knife sharpening method that wasn't small and portable enough to take with me anywhere. And these knives were sharpened with small portable sharpeners. These knives were all new when I got them and there wasn't a single one of them that had a brand new edge that I wasn't able to improve. Many times I have reprofiled new knife blades with small sharpeners. And when I do that job right, resharpening in the field can be accomplished in a matter of seconds. It usually takes more time to dig the sharpener out than it does to touch up the blade. I have used about every basic type of small sharpener imaginable. And I'll offer you some tips on using each type. Before we get done, I'll show you the method I use now, which is the fastest method I've ever used. What I've used more than anything else over the years is this little whetstone. I've always gotten good results with it, probably for two reasons. One, when I was a teenager, my grandfather showed me how to sharpen a knife on a whetstone. And the other reason is this whetstone is very abrasive. It takes off metal fairly quickly. In fact, it is the most abrasive whetstone I've ever used, so I've seen many small whetstones that can't even come close to taking metal off the way this thing can. I got this whetstone with an old US-made Camillus survival knife, and when I was away from home, this is always what I carried. My grandpa had his own way of doing things, and because he was my grandpa, I never disobeyed his knife sharpening rules. The first rule he had was never use oil on a stone or a stone that requires oil. Now we know that oil stones do work, but Grandpa's thinking was oil is just a pain to deal with and water is easier to deal with and cheaper. His second rule is make sure you have the blade at the correct angle on the stone and if need be get your nose down close to the stone to make sure. Now this is very important and I'm sure if he had not emphasized this I would have had trouble in later years getting decent sharpening results. He had a third rule for a knife that just needed a touch up. He'd position the blade so it was right on the stone and he'd pull away from the edge in an angle like this. He never pushed the knife toward the edge. I know some folks get good results pushing the knife toward the edge, but because Grandpa said don't do it, I'm not allowed to. Then after a few swipes on the stone, he'd switch to a slight pressure. If I felt a burr on one side of the blade, he told me to remove it with a light sideways pull like this. His fourth rule was that if a knife was really dull, it required an extra step. That step would be to first position the blade so the edge was close to the stone, and then begin with a circular motion. The idea behind the circular motion is it allows you to maintain the angle without having to lift up the blade and reposition it. Once it began to get sharp, he switched to his rule number three. A grandpa sharpened pocket knives at about 12 or 15 degrees on a side for an overall blade angle of about 30 degrees. I've used this basic method on flat diamond sharpeners, round diamond sharpeners, and a ceramic rod. I usually hold them like this to keep an eye on the angle. With a rod, this is one variation to help maintain the angle. So that's the stuff I did for a long time, and these days I use something different. And I use something different because I found something that's way, way faster than what I used to do. And there's a reason why I was interested in speeding up things. When I go on those kind of long trips I described previously, I'm busy doing things that I just don't have a lot of spare time. It's either get up early and go hunting, or get up early and start hiking. I would agree that knife sharpening can be a leisurely sort of pastime to while away the hours. And the way I used to do it, that's the way it went. Taking those long trips made me want to find a way to speed up the process. And that's what led me to these. These are ready edge sharpeners. These are what I use these days. All the knives you saw sharpened in the opening video were sharpened with these sharpeners. Remember what I said about the Camilla stone being abrasive? Ready edge sharpeners are extremely aggressive and they will shred metal very quickly. 
There are other pull-through sharpeners that do work, but for what I do, I have found the Ready Edge sharpeners to be more versatile. They come in varying angles. There's a 30 degree angle, a 40 degree angle, and a 60 degree angle that I know of. I first bought a 30 degree sharpener that works so well on folding knives that I bought a 40 degree sharpener to help with larger knives. With some big blades, the 30 degree sharpener is all I need to use. With others, I first use a 30 degree sharpener to reprofile the blade and then a 40 degree sharpener to finish the job. A lot of the new knives I've had had steep shoulders at the edge bevel, a profile similar to what we see here on the left. The profile I want to end up with is closer to that on the right. Grandpa never used a convex grind and I haven't either with the exception of a folding knife or two. And I've never ever rolled the edge of a blade either. Ready Edge warns not to use too much pressure with their sharpeners and I agree a lot of pressure just isn't needed because these things take off metal very easily. The basic trick to using one is to hold the blade at a precise 90 degree angle to the sharpener like this. I always position the sharpener on a hard surface like a board or a tree trunk and I find it helpful to tip the top of the sharpener backward just a little like this. If I feel a burr on the blade, for example on the right side of the blade, I will angle the knife a small amount so the sharpener rubs off the burr like this and it only takes a slight pull to clean it up. These things cost about uh, $19 each on Amazon in early 2015 and to me they're very much worth the price. You notice they have little Allen screws holding in the sharpening edges. If your edges ever get dull, you can rotate each cutting edge for a fresh surface and each of the four corners is a cutting surface. For the benefit of any novices watching, we should probably point out that while traditional stones almost always require use of water or oil, things like diamond sharpeners, ceramic rods, and pull-through sharpeners are used dry. No liquid is necessary with those sharpeners. I said earlier that I almost always can improve on the edge of a new knife, but there is one exception to that, and that exception is Mora knives. They are crazy sharp like razors when they're brand new. If you've never owned one before and you get one, be careful with it because they are really sharp. That's it, and thanks a lot for watching.